Hi guys, Rod from VMN here. I want, on, in an earlier video, we talked about how to set up a MESA 7i76e and how to do the basics of installation. And now it's time for us to start looking at doing this in a full-blown enclosure. So let's just have a bit of a look what we've got here. What we've got here um, is a 500 by 500 millimeter enclosure from IP enclosures here in Australia um, and it's distributed on my side of the country by a company called Tro Pacific or tro.com.au. Over the, on this side um, I've given a fair bit of thought here but over on this side we've just got a, a mains power inlet, fuse, filter and switch. Here is a, uh, should just pop open here is uh, the air outlet for the fan, um, nicely filtered, able to be changed. Um, and this one here um, is a simple network port, it's just an ordinary RJ45 um, network port, um, which will connect a computer on the outside to the MESA 7i76E on the inside. In this control panel, we're also um, using a safety relay, which has added a little bit of extra complexity to it. And instead of using Linux CNC to turn the safety relay on, which we could do, decided that we will have a trigger here on the side, out of the road, and then we will be able to trigger it there. So let's just have a look at the top side. And um, hopefully I can turn this over. It's pretty heavy now. Um, I can do it this way. So once again, um, a fan here, also from IP enclosures, a fan on the inside um, can clip on and off and um, arrange the, uh, you can use it to determine <coughs> um, which way you want the flow to go. <coughs> More on that shortly. Um, I've designed this so that it will be basically the operator's control panel. So there'll be a single e-stop here um, to stop this, which will trigger the safety relay. Uh, you see, you need to disengage the e-stop, press the trigger here, and um, then two more buttons, which I happen to like, which is sort of not standard with Linux CNC, but a run step um, button and a pause resume. So when you're running a program, if you hit run, it will... Um, it will start the program that's in the system and if you hit pause it will pause that program until you press resume and while it's paused you can step through soft through the program by pressing one click at a time that's probably not so useful for plasma because you've got to turn the torch on to make it useful but um, it probably will be handy in cut recovery so now it's time to have a look at the inside of this plasma, this um, control panel, and we'll see what we've done. So time to open this uh, control panel up and see what we've done so far. So at this stage, we've done nothing in relation to um, to setting the system up or doing any of the wiring. Um, there's a couple of different things that we're doing here that's sort of unusual in terms of Linux CNC. One is we're using an AC um, toroid here to power our LAM technologies drivers. And the other thing is we have a safety relay. A lot of people don't worry about that. And the third thing that we've got, which is a little bit different, is over here is a um, control panel for, let me go and find it, there's a control here for a RS, uh, sorry, a um, 433 megahertz wireless receiver. And I didn't point it out before, but on the other side, there's a um, antenna plug here for the external antenna to the MPG. So the MPG um, has a normal um, dial that will dial into a 7i76e. Um, it has a six axis X, Y, Z, four, five, and six. So we're going to enable those because X, Y, and Z will be useful, but four, five, and six will allow us to do things like um, alter 
um, speed controls and overrides and things like that. So that's useful. Um, and then our one times, ten times, and a hundred times. Um, so I've had one of these on my spaceship plasma cutter for a long time, and I've found it being very successful. It's never faltered. It'll run. It'll work sort of from 25 metres away. I haven't tested any further than that. So, so now let's have a look. Get that out of the road, and um, we'll just have a look at how we've laid this out. I've tried to keep. Um, some semblance of order to this and to keep different sections of the wiring in different areas. So the intent is that all our AC wiring will run around this loop here and somewhere we'll need to run some wires up here to the fan, to this section here. Um, so that's the AC section. Um, we need wires both sides because of the contact and things like that. Um, this contactor is a three phase contactor, but this is only a single phase device. So what I'm going to do is, and it has a spare um, series of contacts, so I'm going to break this into, into two. two. Two of these um, connectors will um, operate the fan, and that will turn off the noise source when um, these LAMP Technologies drivers are not running. And, um, and then the other two will disable the, um, the toroid power. So the toroid power supply here will give us um, 60 volts AC. It will flow through a couple of wires here through to um, one wire will go here and the other wire will go here, um, which I'm hoping you can see. Um, you can. And then um, those, those power will run up through a series of um, fuses per the LAMP technology's um, best practice. And they'll come round um, up here and come in on the top here. Um, and then all our logic wires will come through this channel here and probably drop down in here, um, down to outputs on the bottom here, which we haven't done yet. But down here we would have um, X, Y, two Ys, Z, and a, and a uh, A axis for um, rotary axis, and then hence the five drives here. And then we probably have um, two, maybe a DB9 connector. One will go up to take, carry the wires up to the um, gantry Z assembly, and the other one will go to the table for the um, X and Y limits. Um, the safety relay is quite complex and um, essentially here there are three um, contactors. One of them will drive this. E everything about safety relays is, is about redundancy. So of these three contactors, one of them will drive the contactor here to power up the, um, the, the actual drives. And the other two will connect to these small relays here that are designed as a fail-safe. So each one of those two contacts will turn these relays on. There's LEDs here. And from that, um, 24 volts will loop through that and trigger another relay, which I haven't got an, um, installed yet. And um, the other relay will switch 24 volt power over to the MESA. The E-stop um, is up here and um, a bit further back, back over here. The e-stop, um, it's a little bit different to the average one that you buy from JCO or somewhere like that. It has two normally closed switches on it and they'll come back to the safety switch and once again they're redundant. So essentially what has to happen for redundancy is the um, both sides of the safety of the e-stop must be clear fault clear of a fault the contactors will fire and that will bridge these two relays and then a signal going through those two relays through each one in series will come back over onto the safety switch here and it will um, only enable the machine if um, if everything works and comes out of e-stop if it does if that if some if there's one fault then it won't come out of e-stop so 
that's the and then over here we've got our oh, we've got our antenna to go up here for the um, I'll put it down where you can see it the antenna here is for the pendant um, and the Mesa 7i76e here down here with all the power supplies there's another 24 volt isolated power supply here which will be used for ohmic sensing so this will be a totally separate circuit for ohmic sensing over on this table over on this um, here we have two THCADs, one's a THCAD 5, another one's a THCAD 10, um, 5 and 10 being the maximum voltage range that these things will see. So divided voltage will come into the THCAD 10 um, and probably running a 20 to 1 divider from a 45 XP and it will then um, it will then go back, this output is a voltage to frequency divider, so it will come back over here onto the 7i76e um, encoder input. So we'll have two encoder inputs here. So once we receive that frequency count in Linux CNC, we'll be able to um, convert it to uh, a voltage accorded, just doing some mass within Linux CNC. The second one is the ohmic sensing. Um, the ohmic sensing requires two, um, a, a couple of resistors. Uh, I've got these mounted here in um, fuse boxes which is a convenient way of doing it. This one's a 5 watt resistor so uh, I've got it mounted very proud of the surface to keep heat away from it. The, sm the other smaller one here is just a nominal quarter, quarter watt I think. Um, 390k this one's 24k so that's for the omic sensing circuit and um, what haven't we talked about um, everything's there the the switches what we saw from the outside of here you can see that i've rather than going plugging this into here it's nicer and neater to run a, a separate flywire a separate um, coaxial cable up to a bulk, bulkhead fitting here. So over time I'll try and do some videos of wiring each one of these sections up and um, that will become a sort of a whole series of videos that shows you how to do best practice. In summary the three things that are a little bit different here uh, I think is the use of the safety relay Maybe it's for using a THCAD for um, my version of AMIC sensing using a software component that I developed myself but with a lot of input from um, Peter Wallace at MESA in the US. A separate MPG here, this device here will just wire straight into the MESA inputs. So essentially the, the um, MPG will be as if it's hardwired into the, to the board here. So we're going to use a lot of inputs. We've reduced the number of inputs on the MPG by using what we call um, digital um, inputs. So instead of having separate discrete inputs here, we're just using a bitmap so that we can reduce the number of pins that we require because otherwise we're going to run a little bit short. The other thing that is going to consume a lot of pins is that there's a output pin on each of the drives here which is the boost function so there's five of those going to be used and the other thing is Liam has um, uh, fault inputs as well so each one of these drives will be monitored by Linux CNC um, and if there's an amplifier fault it will halt the device and, in, uh, and the other thing is by using the boost feature that we spoke about that we will be able to turn on um, when the motors are not accelerating we will turn on the boost feature which will allow the, the motors to reduce, the, the LAM drivers will reduce the current to the motors by, well I'm using 50% but I believe we could go down to 30% still and, and we'll reduce the current to the drives while they're not working. So for most of the time um, 
the drives will be idling along about 50% of their current, their required current, and that means that they have plenty of time to cool down so we can achieve much higher performance even though we're still using open loop steppers. So um, apologies guys for um, not doing any further filming of the, um, of the wiring of this thing. It took forever to wire. Um, there's a huge amount of wiring in it but um, it all worked pretty well. Now I, um, one thing I would say is with the, um, with these GX16 connectors, which I use for the motors, the six little silver ones, um, I wouldn't, um, do that again. Instead, what I'd do is I would use cable grommets there and pass the, the wires straight through and out to the motor. And then out at the motor end, I would use some of these pretty cool, um, automotive items which are called a QC connector. You buy them in kits. Um, you need a um, proper tool to um, to crimp them um, but they're light and they're effective and they're easy to connect um, and disconnect so if you need to pull a motor off to service it they're um, easy to um, look at. So that is my recommendation on how you um, connect your motors up to your control box. Um, I um, hope you've enjoyed this video. I think it's um, been a massive learning curve to get to the stage to build this. And um, I really look forward to what um, you can achieve on your own control box. So please share um, that as you get further down the track.